sadness this week over the loss of a beautiful woman, YouTuber and TV personality Stevie Ryan. Ryan committed suicide this week. She was 33. It was just a week after revealing that her grandfather had died that Ryan took her own life. The coroner's office confirmed that Ryan passed away on Saturday, July 1st. You are now listening to The Spearsy Spin with your host, Mike Spears. Stevie Ryan rose to fame through her YouTube show known as Little Loca and later began celebrity impressions and parodies on her show. Now, one of her parodies was that of Paris Hilton. She apparently loved to do uh, parent, uh, Paris Hilton impersonations, and I guess she was quite good at it. Now, Ryan made claim to the fact that she was obsessed with the show and its growing popularity. Ryan's impersonations became a pop culture series on VH1 called Stevie TV. Later, she would co-host with Brody Jenner's E-series, Sex with Brody. One of her other likes was co-hosting the show Mentally Chill, which is a podcast about depression. In an episode released just two days before Ryan's death, she revealed that her grandfather died just days earlier, and she was worried that his death would send her into a deeper depression. During this same episode, Ryan and co-host Kristen Carney discussed suicide. Depression. You know, for some people, it's a word. For others, it's, um, it's a passe grievance used when they say they are sad or they're feeling low. For some, they believe depression is a way for others to garner attention. But for those who have suffered from depression felt its life-chilling effects, felt its powerful influence on making your life miserable, felt the aches and pains, the rapid heartbeat, the pain in the chest, the feeling of utter horror and fear or the tightness in your chest that makes breathing almost impossible. It is for those who are suffering from depression or for those who have lost a loved one to depression and ultimately suicide, that we brought this show out, and it's in two parts. We have part one this evening, and then tomorrow night we have part two. Now, suicide, of course, is a very serious... Those of you who listen all the time or know me, you know that I constantly say, we do a very poor job in this country with mental health. We really do. Now, there's an estimated 30% of Americans today that are on some type of psychotropical, psychotropical, <laughs> psychotropic drug therapy program. But out of that 30%, and that's an estimation, but out of that 30%, only about 10 to 15% receive any talk therapy. And when you're dealing with any type of, of mental issue, it's not just the prescription of, of uh, you know, therapy drugs. It's also the talk therapy that goes along with that that, that tends to help. So what we're doing in our, our two-day show here is we want to we talk a little bit more about mental health, depression, and suicide and you'll see why in a moment here, because we're going to give you some statistics. And folks, you're not going to believe it. And, you know, the average bird on the street, you know, they, they just don't, you know, get involved too much with statistics like from, you know, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia, because that's just not in, in their everyday uh, thinking, their, their everyday, uh, you know, realm. But according to the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia, suicide is now the 10th leading cause of death for everybody in all ages. And in 2013, 41,000 suicides were recorded in the United States. <laughs> Hi, 
On Friday, February 25, 1994, 17-year-old Alfonso Edwards wrecked the first car our father ever bought him. After leaving the scene of the accident and arriving home, he received a phone call from his girlfriend stating that she could possibly be pregnant. In an act of hopelessness and distress, my brother and only sibling walked downstairs to the den of our home and shot himself in the face. The car accident was only a minor fender bender and his girlfriend wasn't pregnant. Each year, 5,000 teenagers commit suicide and for every death, there are 50 to 100 attempts. We must put a stop to this unspoken tragedy. We can be aware of the warning signals like sudden changes in behavior and constant mood swings. For more information, please visit www.teensuicide.us and let your teen know that suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. As patriotic Americans, we all share in our love for the liberties we enjoy and an appreciation for the high cost of our freedom. But while some wounds are obvious, many are unseen. The VA says, over half of our brave warriors who have served our military post 9-11 suffer from symptoms of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. This has led to rising divorce rates and tragically, record increases in suicide amongst our proud military and veteran community. As time marches on, the numbers only increase. There is help. Together, we can provide hope to those who have served us so bravely, but carry the unseen wounds of war. To learn more about how PTSD is affecting our military and how you can help provide the hope they so desperately need, go to ptsdusa.org, ptsdusa.org. Forty-one thousand. And so many times you, when you talk with folks and families and so on, um, it's, it's almost like, well, I, I, I just don't understand. I, 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 for the life of me, I don't know why this happened. Because uh, somehow I think there is a belief system out there where there is a certain race or there is a certain uh, educational a deviation from the norm that's associated with uh, suicide, vocationals, where people work, what they do, status symbols. Uh, all that is nonsense. It is nonsense because, you see, suicide, it, it knows no racial, educational, or vocational status, nothing. It doesn't. And suicide is more prevalent than most people believe. Now, here are the, the upper crust, if you will, as happy as they seemed on stage in real life, you know, they were miserable and haunted by issues that we will never know. Now, this is just a few um, that we pulled out here to share with you, and we'll go through this list a bit um, because we want to set up tomorrow night's show, which, of course, is going to be a commentary with narrative basically devoted to suicide slash depression. As you know, back in uh, August of 2014, the world was shocked when we learned that Robin Williams committed suicide. He was 63. Now, Williams had suffered from depression throughout much of his life. And again, I, I just have to say this because it's, you know, obviously right up my alley. I've heard folks talk in public a lot and some even on television and so on that, well, you know, what he did, you know, that, that, was, that was childish. That was selfish. And I'm thinking, what the hell are you talking about? For those folks who do not understand the depths of depression, you cannot rationalize any of this, and you shouldn't try, because you can't, Okay. We, we go back now to 1977, and you remember, of course, Freddie Prince, he committed suicide. He was only 22, and he had a history of depression, and he, at the time, was going through a divorce, um, and sadly, his son, uh, Freddie Prince Jr., was less than a year old 
when he took his life. Now, George Reeves, uh, you may, if you're a little bit older, remember, he played Superman. And in 1959, he, he passed away and his death was ruled a suicide. Uh, but many think that, well, it may have been murder or maybe an accidental shooting. That I don't know. Um, but, you know, if, if in fact, uh, you know, that was uh, a suicide, you have to look at what we call the inner mental components. Because George Reeves was, to everybody on the other side of the TV screen, was Superman. And he seemed to take that role pretty seriously. So I'm, I'm, I'm not all familiar with the George Reeves and, and his persona. But for me, it doesn't ring quite true, but that's neither here nor there. Spalding Gray, uh, in 2004, committed suicide. He was 62. Um, sadly, his body was found in the East River. Now, he had suffered from severe depression, and that was after being involved in a car accident. And just a, a sidebar here uh, with regard to accidents, um, wars, violence, and so on. There is now a, a, a concentric effort uh, with the American Psychological Association and the American Psychiatric Association. And I could go on with all sorts of association, but taking a look of PTSD, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, we're finding and seeing, uh, meaning those in the, the forensic part of uh, psychology, psychiatry, that we're looking further and looking deeper, and we're seeing a whole different animal here with regard to, again, severe depression and PTSD. Uh, but that's not what our show is about, so we're going to go past that and move on. I just wanted to throw that in. Richard Jenny, um, well, he was actually uh, born John, um, was it Calangelo, I think. Well, he killed himself, committed suicide in 2007. He was 49, and he had been diagnosed with severe clinical depression. <laughs> At age 10, John was the first person in his family to make the honor roll at school. When he was 17, John was the first person in his family to be an Eagle Scout. Upon turning 18, John was the first person in his class to graduate from boot camp. At age 19, John graduated from airborne training. He was first in his class. At 20, John was the first of his siblings to get married. When he was 21, John was a member of the first airborne unit to enter into Fallujah, Iraq. At age 22, John was the first member of his unit to get the Bronze Star for his actions in combat. At 23, John returned home from Iraq and gave his parents their first grandchild. At age 24, John was the first person in his battalion to commit suicide. John, like many other military men and women, suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. Nearly 40,000 military men and women in current service have been diagnosed with PTSD. If you think you suffer from PTSD, please go to Mental Health va.gov. There are support groups all over the United States. People like you, feeling like you, sharing like you want to share. Let us place hope before hopelessness. Also, we're going to uh, have on board a, a clip. We're going to have a uh, doctor actually talking about uh, President Donald Trump, because as you know, uh, there is a, a group of uh, Democratic uh, senators, I think a couple of Congress people too, who are trying to get a law, or I, I'm not sure what they're trying to do, but they're trying, they're trying to get uh, the President of the United States diagnosed uh, with God knows what, um, because they say that he is unfit to be president, and that's that's another lead-in for tomorrow night's show. So you want to hear that too. So. We're moving on here a little bit, and we're going to talk about Michael Roof here, who committed suicide in 2009 at the age of 32. Now, he had a MySpace uh, page, you probably remember that, and you know he claimed even on his MySpace page that he was suffering from a social disorder and various mental illnesses. So 
why would he put that out there? I mean, how many folks typically would bear their soul that much? And the answer truly is, is because he was reaching out. Benjamin Hendrickson. Now, you may remember him a bit. Uh, his, uh, he had a show where his TV daughter uh, had took her own life, and uh, you know that, that was what he was actually working on back in 2006. Now, he was 55, and uh, he had fallen into a severe depression, and, and he killed himself. So, you know, again... We're, we're bringing these out. We're using big names because, you know, obviously we're not going to bring up, you know, folks living in, in Dundee, Pena, and Watkins Glen, Elmira. Uh, we're not going to do that. But we're going to use these folks because you would suspect that these folks, well, the last thing that they would be thinking about is suicide. Everett Sloan. Well, in 1965, uh, he was distraught because he thought... He was going blind. He was 55 years old, and obviously depressed, and killed himself. Now, here is a person with some really wrong thinking, and this went horribly bad. But depression, everyone thinks, well, I shouldn't say everyone thinks, but depression is not always, uh, you know, well, you know, Joe started feeling depressed last year, and, uh, you know, this year he's really depressed. Uh, depression can actually uh, come on to you much quicker because we typically, especially women, uh, women hold in so much, whether they uh, have been abused, sexually abused, if, um, you know, their, their partners, their mates or whatever are abusive, and they hold this in. And, uh, you know, typically what we see is, uh, women who do this between the ages of probably 38 to 45, maybe 50, there's typically a trigger and a breakdown. And, uh, you know, this is where this, this comes out at. And sadly, um, not all, and we're talking about women right now, but not all women bounce back from that. If the black dog of depression makes you feel like the saddest soul on earth, you're not alone. Around 350 million people share this debilitating but treatable condition. If you're worried about someone, ask if they're okay. If you're not doing so well yourself, ask for help. There is no shame in doing so. The only shame is missing out on life. So get help, be helped, and always hold on to hope. Michael Gilden, um, now he uh, he was actually in the Return of the Jedi. Now he he made his film debut. Uh, he was an Ewok, and um, as far as I know, he was slotted to be in the next uh, however many I don't know how many of those things they've they've made now the uh, Star Wars saga. But for whatever reason, you know, he just got so down and so out and they just thought there was no other way out and we lost him in 2006 to suicide spencer charters uh he was of course in ill health he uh spent a lot of time around the movie studios movies and so on and that was all the way back in 1945 so i'm assuming that a lot of you will remember him unless you're an old movie buff rod loren committed suicide back in 2007 uh, he was being investigated for the murder of his wife, uh, Nita, at the time of his death. He was 67. Richard Quine, uh, he was 68, and he was depressed over his declining health, and he decided to take his own life, and he was 68. Charles Rocket, and if you're not familiar with him, we won't spend a lot of time because he's not horribly well-known, but still known. Uh, 2005, he became chronically depressed and committed suicide. Ray Combs, uh, you may remember Ray Combs. Uh, he was the dude, the man in charge of the family feud. He was the host. Um, and at the time that he took his own life, he had a lot of debt. And uh, 
you know, debt is one of the contributing factors to depression. Now, Andrew Koenig, if you remember, he was in the growing pains of the actor there, and he suffered depression throughout most of his life. And finally, in 2001, he, at 41 years of age, committed suicide. Now, tomorrow night, we're going to talk about depression, anxiety, suicide, and what's left after someone is gone. We will try to provide the most up-to-date information available, and also we're going to share beliefs from the AMA as well as the APA. I'll provide a broad-based theory on suicide based upon education, experience, face-to-face -face discussions with those who have contemplated or attempted suicide. So that's tomorrow night here on the Spearsy Spin. That is our show for this evening, and this is our part one. Uh, part two will be much more involved, and I think it's going to touch a lot of people because there's, uh, uh, you know, just in, a, I'm going to say, a 75-mile radius of where we, we do this show from, there are folks who sadly have, have had to be on the sidelines of suicide. So we'll cover that uh, tomorrow night. As always, remember there's only one world. We all have to live in it, and we all have to watch out for our brothers and sisters. Let's see if we can make the world a little bit better. We'll see everybody tomorrow. <laughs>